travel by land, by sea, and by air for the sick and the suffering, for those who are held in captivity and for their safety and salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, Lord I have 
to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said, I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it comes, that when it does come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, so I do. Arise, let us go from here. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command in you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. These things I commanded you, that you love one another. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me, for it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have my word, they will keep yours also, but all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin, but now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates
hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. But this happened that the word might be fulfilled which is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. And you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. These things I have spoken to you, that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God service. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you, that when the time comes you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. But now I go away to him who sent me and none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I did not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. sin, and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the Spirit of Truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears he will speak, and he will tell you the things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine, therefore I said to you, and declare it to you. A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me, because I go to the Father. Then some of his disciples said among themselves, What is this that he says to us? A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me. And because I go to the Father, they said, therefore, what is this that he says a little while? We do not know what he is saying. Now Jesus knew that they desired to ask him, and he said to them, Are you inquiring among yourselves about what I said? A little while, and you will not see me. Again, a little while. Until now. 
asking you will receive, that your joy may be full. These things I have spoken to you in figurative language, but the time is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figurative language, but I will tell you plainly about the
you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they may also be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory which you I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. I am them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, that these and these have known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name, and I will declare it, that the love which, with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples over the brook Kidron, where there was a garden with which he and his disciples from the chief priests and 
the Pharisees came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that would come upon him, went forward and said to him, Whom are you seeking? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. And Judas, who betrayed him, also stood with them. Now when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Then he asked them again, Whom are you seeking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. Therefore, if you seek me, let these go their way. That the saying might be fulfilled which he spoke, Of those whom you gave me, I have, I have lost none. Then Simon Peter, having, draw, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into the sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which my father has given me? Then the detachment of troops and the captain of the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. And they led him away to Annas first, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. Now it was Caiaphas who advised the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Now that disciple was known to the high priest, and went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter stood, out, stood at the door outside. Then the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to her, who kept the door and brought Peter in. Then the servant girl, who kept the door, said to Peter, You are not also so one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servant and the officers who made a fire of coals stood there, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them and warmed himself. The high priest then asked Jesus about his disciples and his doctrine. Jesus answered them, I spoke openly to the world. I always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where the Jews always meet, and in secret I have said nothing. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. Indeed, they know what I said. And when he had said these things, one of the officers who stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Do you answer the high priest like that? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him, bound to Caiaphas the high priest. Now Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. Therefore they said to him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of whom, whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter denied again, and immediately a rooster crowed. Then they led Jesus from Caiaphas the Praetorium, and it was early morning. But they themselves did not go into the Praetorium, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover.
Peter followed him at a distance to the high priest's courtyard, and he went in and sat with the servants to see the end. Now the chief priests, the elders, and all the council sought false testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. Even though many false witnesses came forward, they found none. But at last two false witnesses came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. And the high priest arose and said to him, Do you answer nothing? What is it these men testify against you? But Jesus kept silent, and the high priest answered and said to him, I put you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, It is as you said. Nevertheless, I say to you, Hereafter you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes, saying, You have spoken blasphemy. What further need do we have of witnesses? Look now, you have heard his blasphemy. What do you think? They answered and said, He is deserving of death. Then they spat in his face and beat him, and others struck him with the palms of their hands, saying, Prophecy to us, Christ, who is the one who struck you? Now Peter sat outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him, saying, You also were with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you are saying. And when he had gone out to the gateway, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This fellow also was with Jesus of Nazareth. But again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And a little later, those who stood by came up and said to Peter, Surely you are also one of them, for your speech betrays you. Then he began to curse and swear, saying, I do not know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed, and Peter remembered the word of Jesus, who had said to him, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So he went out and wept bitterly. Oh, Lord, sovereign Lord, glory to 
time eat the Passover. Pilate then went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not an evil doer, we would not have delivered him off to you. Then Pilate said to them, You take him and judge him according to your law. Therefore the Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled which he spoke, signifying by what death he would die. Then Pilate entered the praetorium again, called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, are you speaking for yourself about this, or did others tell you this concerning me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight, so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? And when he said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no fault in him. But you have a custom that I should release someone to you at the Passover. Do you therefore want me to release to you the king of the Jews? Then they all cried again, saying, Not this man. But Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. So then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe. Then they said, Hail, King of the Jews, and they struck him with their hands. Pilate then went out again and said to them, Behold, I am now
the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? You see to it. Then he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple, and departed, and went and hanged himself. But the chief priests took the silver and said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, because they are the price of blood. And they consulted together, and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Therefore that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then, then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of him who was prized, whom they of the children of Israel prized, and gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord directed me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said to him, It is as you say. And while he was being accused by the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he answered him not one word, so that the governor marveled greatly. Now at the feast the governor was accustomed to releasing to the multitude one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they had gathered together, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you? Barabbas, or Jesus, who is called Christ. For he knew that they had handed him over because of envy. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife said to him, saying, Have nothing to do with that just man. For I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, What then shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? They all said to him, let him be crucified. And then the governor said, Why, what evil has he done? But they cried out all the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could not prevail at all, but rather that a tumult was rising, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this person. You see to it. And all the people answered and said, his blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to him, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole garrison around him. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. When they had twisted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Then they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they took the robe off him, put his own clothes on him, and led him away to be crucified. Now as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear.
Well 
had appeared to many. So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, True. Assure. Sure. 
assuredly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. So when the centurion saw what had happened, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And the whole crowd who came together to that sight, seeing what had been done, beat their breasts and returned. But all his acquaintances and the woman who followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. O oh, be to who your long suffering, O oh, Lord, O oh, 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 Lord, breaking her in iron and the cherubim, and we are Thank you. 
Praise Him for His wonderful deeds. Praise Him for His surpassing great greatness. My firstborn Son in His trial has done double evil, rejecting me the fountain of living water, and then He dug Himself a Our 
and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took the body of Jesus, and Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds. Then they took the body of Jesus and bound it with strips of linen with the spices, as the custom of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So there they laid Jesus, because of the Jews' preparation day, for the tomb was nearby. Peace be unto all, and with your spirit, your 
Christ is among us. We've come now to Holy Thursday evening, and we've just celebrated the Madden's service of Good Friday. We heard 12 gospel lessons tell us the whole story of Christ's passions, death on the cross for our salvation. We heard in the beginning of the first Gospels, Christ preparing his disciples for what was to come, his impending crucifixion and death, and the fact that he would be leaving them. We heard of Judas's betrayal for 30 pieces of silver, of Peter, his friend and his disciple, abandoning him even at the end when he said he would not. We heard how he was beaten and spat upon and mocked and sentenced to death by those whom he had come to save. And even Pontius Pilate, the governor, seems confused by all of this, saying that he finds no fault in the man. We see Christ carrying his cross down the road, and we see a helper in the midst of all of this chaos, all of this pain, and all this abandonment. And Simon of Cyrene, who is tasked to take up Christ's cross and carry it to the place of Golgotha where Christ would be crucified. And this man, Simon of Cyrene, is one of these people that we think about as a helper. Somebody who's there showing us the grace of God in the midst of the struggle and the terrible time. Yeah. Simon of Cyrene says in the scriptures was coming back from a journey. He's probably tired, ready to go home, not too concerned with all this promotion on the streets. When all of a sudden he's given this great gift, this great responsibility to be the one person in all of this who's truly there for Christ, who truly, in a real way, takes up his cross and falls after his Lord. And then we get to the place of the skull where Golgotha, where Christ is crucified with two other thieves, one repentant and one mocking him in the same kind of way as everyone else. To the good thief who asks for forgiveness at the end, he tells him, today you will be with me in paradise. Another shining example of goodness and hope in the midst of such a terrible moment. A moment that in its horror is about to bring new life to a world that is dead to sin. When Christ yields his spirit, the sun is darkened, the earth quakes, rocks split, and the dead arise. The people that had crucified him must have been terrified. And we know that when they left Golgotha in that moment that they ran beating their breasts is a sign of repentance. They felt what the centurion says aloud that truly this is the Son of God. And in that moment, Christ takes this symbol. He takes the cross, which had been an instrument of death, torture, and destruction for its entire existence until that moment. And in that moment, Christ takes the cross and takes what is a symbol of death and makes it a symbol of life. He takes that which has done evil and harm and caused pain, brings, transforms it into something that we look at and see hope. Something that we look at and see life and not death. Christ dies on the cross, and it appears like it's the end of the world to everybody who is there. Just like sometimes
sometimes within the past few months it might have seemed like it was the end for us. But because of Christ and the cross, it's never the end for us. He gives us the opportunity of new life and salvation in Him. Christ's cross is where He shows us that He is the King of glory, the Lord of peace, and He brings life into the world. This is the moment of the year that we as Orthodox Christians culminate to as we prepare to enter into the holy day of Good Friday, where we'll place Christ's body into the tomb, and where we will again with joy, and for all of you who I know wish to be in the church, we will be able to proclaim with the same joy on Saturday evening, the same joy that we always do, that Christ is risen from the dead, because this moment happened over 2,000 years ago. It happens again now, and it happens in our lives every time that we look to Christ and trust Him and ask for His mercy. He always gives it to us. May the blessing of the Lord be upon you, and I pray that you are encouraged and strengthened and brought to true repentance as you reflect upon the cross and continue this journey through Good Friday and Holy Saturday into the joys of Pascha on Sunday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Christ is among us. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises here to you, Most High, to show forth your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness by night. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us.
Have mercy on us and save us, for he is gracious and he loves Yeah.